In this video I'm gonna share with you 5 very important tips to make your backplate renders in Blender into the next step. Let's start! So I opened a new file here, I just bring my car model here, this is the muscle car that I built before. It even has some mistakes as you see, it's not a finished model. But if you use more finished model, more high quality model, the renders will be also affected. In previous videos we used some HDRIs and we know how to do it. But in this video I want to use backplate images. But the tip number one is to use the same HDRI and the backplate from the same source. So this way the reflections and the background will match in a better way. And also the angle is very important. So I will go to render view. It's a new file so there's nothing on this uh, file no HDRI yet. So I go to my render engine. I will go to cycles and I will pick my GPU. So I go to my shader editor here below. I go to the world option on the shader editor and here I'm gonna add an environment. To do that shift A texture environment texture and I pick this HDRI. By the way today's sponsor is Scenebox360 and we will talk about them very soon. So I took my HDRI. I connect it to the background. As we see already we have the environment and we need also the backplate. To activate the backplate I go to hit number pad 0. I hit the number pad 0. I pick my camera and when I pick the camera we have this camera options here. I turn on the background images, add an image, open and I'm gonna pick the backplate image from the same HDRI. So I pick an angle like this. This is the backplate. So now what I'm gonna do is I will just move the camera around. In the camera view I will go to my view, turn on the camera to view and I kind of match my camera angle with the car. Here very important thing is the camera lens. Like if you, if you have very wide angle lens on the image or on the camera they need to match. To see this we can go to right click to the image and see the properties. On the details we can see some options. For example the resolution which will be also necessary soon but what I want to learn is the focal length and here it says 55 millimeter. So on my camera in Blender I will try to match it something similar. By default we have 50 so it's quite similar but let's do it 55. And then I try to match more or less the car angle to fit this background. If you see it's a little bit more uh, pale it looks not totally full opacity and it's here. I can just drag this slider to one so this way I can see the full image on the background. So let's say my car fits a bit like that or this is too much front of the car so I'm just gonna change the image. Maybe I will pick the first one and rotate the car a little bit. Maybe something like that. Now we need to match the angle of the HDRI with the backplate. For this I'm gonna lower the opacity again. So I can see what's happening also on the back of the car, like on the HDRI. So to rotate the HDRI, I'm gonna pick on the shader editor, the image texture, the environment texture. Ctrl T with the Wrangler node add-on is turned on. So if I zoom out now, I can see the background as well. And here on the rotation, I will just rotate until I get a similar view with the backplate. And I see that the wall, the trees and this um, side wall on the road is more or less same angle so I will keep it like this so the reflections also now correct on the car and I can again move the opacity to full and be sure about my angle of the car. Maybe a little bit like this is better. So the tip number two is adding a ground shadow because on the back plate we don't have the shadow the car itself has some shadows but the car's shadow on the ground is not visible so I'm gonna add a plane basically scale it up Let's move it like kind of matching with the tires, a little bit even cropping. Scale it up. It doesn't have to be huge. The goal is to more or less catch the shadow area. I go back to my camera view. Right now as you see we have the shadow but also we lose. We crop the image from the background. To avoid this it's very simple. I go to this object properties in the cycles render engine and to visibility and check the box shadow catcher. So now it still looks a little bit awkward. The reason of that is the back plate is not on the front. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to my camera settings again, the back plate is depth is the back. So if I put it on the front, it's 
in front of everything. If I put it at the back, it's on the back of everything. So the ground plane is kind of intersecting with it, but it's totally fine. If I rotate my camera, you can see that we only see the shadow behind the car. We don't see the plane we just created. It's only catching the shadow basically. So I go back to my view. Here, the important part, the tricky part is the reflections of this ground plane is on the car, white reflections on the side of the car and it cannot happening on this environment, right? So to avoid this, I will go back to my plane again. I will for now remove the shadow catcher. I want to see what's happening with this plane and I want to reflect the environment more. It's a very simple thing. I will go to my object on the sh shader editor. I assign a new material, shift A, texture, image texture. And then rather than opening new or adding a new one, I will pick here the image we already have for the background, for the back plate. Okay, then I add this color to the base color and I have my back plate also on the floor now. But I want only the ground. I kind of want this ground to reflect on the side of the car. So I just pick the texture, Ctrl T and maybe scale it a little bit. To scale it, by the way, you can just hold Alt and pick all of them and you can just drag your mouse. So I just hold Alt and just pick them all and started sliding. Something like that is enough for me because now I will also move it on other axis slowly by holding Shift to move very slowly, somewhere like that. So now when I look at from the camera, I see the ground here more or less, right? So the reflection of this will be also kind of like the reflection of the ground. After doing this, I will go to my object properties again when the ground plane is selected and turn on the shadow catcher. So now we don't see a totally white reflection of the shadow catcher. We will see the texture of the environment as well. So now it's time for the tip number three. And tip number three is using unique backplates and unique HDRIs. Because when you grab the first image you can find online for free, you might look like also the others. In your portfolio, this work can look like very ordinary and people can even know, ah, I know this background, I also used it. And it becomes too familiar and it loses the effect of this punch effect, this interestingness maybe. So to do that, I want to say thank you to today's sponsor, Scenebox360. It is a platform you can find high quality HDRIs and backplate images to use on your personal and commercial projects. I also downloaded this background and the HDRI from their website, from Scenebox360. This way, it has more unique look than any random project online. And by using the code BEAR25, you can get 25% discount on any product in Scenebox360. Alright, the tip number four is matching the resolution of your render with the backplate image. So I go to my render tab, as you see by default is 1920 to 1080p. I go to my image and the properties and here I can see on the details what's the resolution. It's 2000 to 1500 pixels. So I type it also on my camera resolutions. This way the proportions of my render, the dimensions of my render will match with the background, with the backplate. And I will go to my camera settings and make the opacity full. And for now, I'm going to just hide the background floor, uh, the shadow catcher, sorry. And I want to be sure about the angle. I think this should be fine. And then the tip number five is the export settings of our render. Now, first thing what I want to do is on the render settings, I will go to film and check the box transparent. So we will not see the HDRI anymore. As I see, we should have done it before because this way we got rid of this annoying gray uh, intersection, let's say. Let me show you again. If I unbox the transparent, we see this gray uh, shadow catcher kind of intersecting with them. So if I just turn on the transparent, we got rid of the HDRI because we don't want it to be visible on the render. And backplate and the shadow, everything is matching perfectly. So now I'm going to render this. But the important thing on the render settings, please be sure that you pick PNG and RGBA settings. This way we will have the alpha, so the background will not be visible, but we will have the shadow and we will have the car. So on post-production, we will match them. Let's hit render. All right, the render is done. So I'm going to save my render and I just opened both of them on Photoshop. This is my render and this is the background. So simply, I will just hit Ctrl A to pick everything from my render, Ctrl C and Ctrl V. So as you see, it just snapped on the background and I can always move around. I can still scale it down, scale it up. But by default, because of our resolution of the render and the 
resolution of the background match, it automatically match just like on the render that I wanted. So the rest is post-production. I'm gonna quickly edit some colors and some levels and brightness and this type of things. And basically that's it. First thing I wanna do is adding blur actually. I will just duplicate this background, go to filter, blur and the lens blur. I add something very small, just a little bit background blur and then hit OK. But I don't want this foreground to be blurred as well. So I will just get a very big eraser and just erase the front area. So this way the blur is on the background but not on the foreground. I will do something similar with the car. I will hit this Ctrl J but it also duplicated the shadow. So maybe we don't need to do it at this stage. Or let's do it. I will just hit Ctrl J, filter, lens blur. I added same type of blur. And with my eraser, I just erase the front of the car and also the shadow because I don't want it to be super dark. So also on the back of the car, we have now a little bit blur. So then I will hold Shift, Control, Alt and E to merge everything in a one new layer. Then Control J to duplicate because I want to keep the original in case I want to go back. And then Camera Raw Filter. In Camera Raw Filter, we have a lot of options. And for example, on the basic, I want to increase the contrast a little bit more, but I will also increase the shadows a little bit more because the car is a little bit too dark, maybe. Highlights, let's see, maybe it's getting too bright. So I can turn on the dehaze to make bring back the sharp darks again, a bit more clarity, maybe. A bit of texture, texture is always nice, I think, for the images. And for the colors, I don't know, this is a bit more color grading stuff now. So I don't know if you are interested in, but these are the quick tips that I like to do. On the saturation, for example, I can pick this eye icon, this picker icon. I can go to my greens and I can desaturate them a little bit. Adds a little bit more touch, a little bit more personality to image, in my opinion. Or we can pick the orange and also a little bit desaturated. Luminance, so we can pick the greens, the specific color is darker or lighter, it's up to us totally. And I'm gonna add some effects, like a little bit of grain to the image, and a little bit of vignette, so the center of the image will be more on the focus, the rest will get a little bit of this darkness. If you see the before after, this is before, this is after, we added more crispy details and a bit more personality to the image. Then I just duplicate it again, I go to levels, and make it make everything a bit darker like this and then with a big eraser again i'm gonna just show where the light is coming from because the light is coming from the left top as you see so here i want to emphasize this darkness a little bit more if we see before and after we basically added a little bit of darkness so what we basically did is number one using the same hdri and the back plate and the same angle number two we use the shadow catcher on the ground plane and we added also image texture to it to not have the flat reflection on the car itself. Number three, I use the HDRI and the backplate from the Scenebox 360 so I have more unique and more personalized, more interesting output on my renders. Number four, we pick the same resolution for the render from the backplate image so they match on the post-production. And number five, we picked on the render export settings RGBA, RGB alpha, to have the background removed from our render so we can we have more flexibilities for the post-production. As a bonus, I can say we did some color grading, but it's itself another topic, so I didn't want to go much much into details in this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, please show it on the thumbs up symbol down there. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe for more car design content. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.